Hello and welcome back to another episode of Divinity Original Sins 2, the definitive edition. My name is Saik and we're playing Honor Mode Plus, which is the highest difficulty, but just made a little bit more difficult with the complete enemy overhaul. Uh, each of the fights that we had so far were pretty much on uh, on the borderline of being impossible to, uh, to do, but we're still keeping strong in the game um, and we made it to the castle which we're now going to assault if you want to assault the castle i recommend taking a high ground here and using the following pulling technique just go up to here that essentially will immediately put everyone into combat and you can start with uh, your summoning uh, with your summoning technique right away guardian angel okay i don't even know what that means but probably their hit points are linked it's interesting to see what kind of uh, buffs uh, the enemy overhaul mod uh, offers this one here is new but it looks interesting Alright, there's nothing wrong with uh, the Incarnate sacrificing itself. We will not be able to hit anything from here. Unless they come down to here. And that means we could basically simply move on enemies are starting to normal enemies are starting to have more than 300 hit points which is insane in the meantime once you have pulled Feel free to move back once they don't see any uh, any more enemies they will automatically come to you there we go let's encourage everyone Good. Time to pre-buff uh, ourselves. And always leave a few uh, ability points open so that as soon as someone is going to come into our uh, engagement area, we do have six ability points. Action points, sorry. Perfect. They lined up absolutely fantastic. We're starting with a Scorch Hound here. That was a solid hit. Now time to slow him. There we go. Slowed. And we've taken away his armor. So he's probably going to be our first target that we're going to kill. Either him or the archers. Good. Now that everyone is in position, let's start. Change the ground. Ooh.
Good. Luckily for us, changing the ground means that all of our skills all of a sudden become so much cheaper that we can cast them all in a row. By the way, we uh, just entangled this gentleman here. Let's start with taking away their physical armor. As well as negating one round for the dog. Perfect. They con the AI considers this hostile territory um, and uh, terrain, so it's going to try to move around it, making their movement even longer. Okay, so in terms of dealing with them, first of all, let's get rid of most of their magical armor. Hmm, I think they have clustered up quite nicely here. So we should uh, use the opportunity to simply get rid of all of their magical armor. Good. Now that our skills are on cooldown, might as well change the element. Use something with a little bit more oomph, shall we? Okay, Saiga needs some healing. Yeah, I'm wondering, should we already go in? The answer is probably not yet. Do we have any consumable... Oh no, don't drink that. Mm. Thought I could throw it. Do we have any consumable that would help us here? No, the water bomb would be misleading. I was hoping we would have something that would explode. Unfortunately, we don't. I don't want to jump in because I know that the enemies are so strong that this is going that it would be suicidal. Instead, let's stand here and wait. Oh, 
All right, Seville needs to heal Saiken. Who, by the way, can't move at the moment. Summoning some more totems. And now I would expect that we should start focusing on one of uh, them. Magister Timery here almost looks close to death. Them clumping up like this just basically asks for AoE damage. Very nice. Both of them are poisoned and take burning damage. Good. Perfect position for us to to engage with them. Let's take away their physical armor. Very nice. And dish out some more damage. Good. Time to jump down. And let's chicken him. Continuing to remove uh, the remaining physical armor here. Saiken continues to need additional healing, which we're going to give him. There we go, very solid damage. This Magister here is close to death. And they can't do anything, the fire is just too strong. Good. This should deal with each of them, plus we heal up. Let's focus on the Magister first. How unlucky. We almost got her. There we go. Both of the archers are down. 
leaving only one magister alive. And this guy is currently sleeping, which we're not going to interrupt. What's wrong with him? Where's his shield? Okay, so the Magister is heavily injured from uh, magical damage, but it's difficult to, uh, to get through physical. But we don't need to. I mean, he only has 19 hit points left, so it's not going to be an issue. There you go. Done. Super close uh, to uh, level up. Let's take a look what our loot is going to look like. Pretty mundane, to be honest. I was hoping for a bit more. There we go. Many grenades and a decent pair of gloves. Ah, the bow isn't bad. Not bad at all, but I think the magical elven crossbow is just a tiny bit better. Nice. Good. We got some solid potions as loot. And we can now go and start uh, going into Fort Joy. So, as for the follow up engagements here, I've tried a lot on this difficulty. Specifically with the additional enemies um, and their power. You know, there are two ways of playing it. Number one is essentially going here and trying to compete uh, or contest for this high ground. Which sometimes works and sometimes it does not. Or you simply play it safe and let them come. So it's a pretty similar preparation. That is lucky. Normally, you uh, it's very difficult to single pull them, so having the opportunity to do that is indeed uh, quite rare. Uh, often they are just running uh, back to their superior. So the main combat does include about six or seven of them, but they're spread out. <clears throat> so it's going to trigger and take off opportunity. Yep, right there. We're not going to use contamination for just one enemy. Why is it 
that he fails to use his uh, shield. What is wrong? Same for his pants and his gloves. Almost all of his armor wasn't equipped. Okay, whatever. It's probably going to remain a mystery why he's de-equipping his stuff. Let's get rid of his physical armor. Yeah, thanks to not wearing the armor, we're now crippled. Good job. And that, kids, is why you should wear your armor. All right. We could crowd control him, but that would mean we can't attack him at the same time. So thanks, but no thanks. Moving up. And knocking him down. Good. Yeah, that was mildly clever. There we go, we got another level up. Good, so let's keep everyone up here and do the level up real quick. Ivan, for some reason, fails to uh, wear his armor, probably. We could use one more memory slot. He's sometimes running out of skills. We're now going for Warfare to increase his physical damage a bit and then polymorph to continue increasing his finesse on top of it. We've got our next um, skill point. He will invest it into bartering. And as for skills, he even got two of them. Uh, this time we're looking for movement uh, skills and adrenaline. You know what? make it heart of steel because we have a hard time surviving the enemies are sometimes one-shotting us and heart of steel really helps a ton good 
So that's one. Loser. How are we? Uh, how are we looking on skills? We're fine. We're actually quite fine. So let's get intelligence for now. We're taking Aerotherk two, and we're taking Thievery three. So with that, she can finally get rid of uh, her uh, gloves because uh, Aerotherk 2 allows her to use teleportation as a skill um, instead of uh, using it with the gloves. Uh, we could also use Uncanny Evasion. I really like the idea, but we don't have enough memory. Yeah, shit happens. Now, that frees up another person who could use the gloves. In this case, I've chosen Saiken, who essentially could uh, use the teleportation gloves uh, to his advantage. So we have two cooldowns for teleporting. More crowd control is good. Uh, Seville is going to continue, you would have guessed it, with Finesse but we're also going to get one memory. Um, we're continuing on Warfare. And Thievery. Good. As for her skills, Skyshot, definitely a worthwhile investment. And we haven't yet stolen the last skill, so... Yeah. Haste would be a, a good barrage, definitely would be good as a skill. Saiken. Skill wise, I think we're fine. Maybe one more, but we also need intelligence so that we can dish out more damage. In terms of skills uh, we have pyro hydro and geo 2 might start a uh, euro third now uh, before we're then uh, and level to level 2 before we then afterwards go for polymorph um, essentially getting additional stats for him uh, and pumping them into intelligence I'm asking myself if we really need a hero Thurk, uh, now or if we're spreading ourselves too thin. Uh, having it later, no question at all, but we're currently not having the means to pull it off. So might as well go into Polymorph right away. And with that, we can uh, put another point into Intelligence. We're also going to skill Thievery. And with the additional skill point, going to use peace of mind. That was incre uh, incredibly helpful in the one situation. Unfortunately, we failed to have it. Okay, so party is upgraded. Let's get down to business <clears throat> and do the next uh, fight here. Good, Iban. Immediately got himself into trouble. So this here is going to be a difficult task. We don't want to run too far away, because then they are not following us anymore. But we most certainly don't want to stand there. We can't rescue the paladin, not with the... Uh, you could do it on normal honor mode, uh, but you wouldn't use the position back here 
but you would instead contest for the high ground, like I mentioned it. Um, fighting against the Paladin, uh, or fighting for the Paladin, is not worth it. They already killed him, because they are so leveled up. We're looking at 350-ish hit points, 400 even, and 400 armor. Yep. And that is some serious, serious, serious uh, hit point and um, and magical uh, and physical resistance scenario. Okay, so what we can do is we can basically to help um, pulling them. We can summon an incarnate. Okay. Moving further into this direction, get out of line of sight. Essentially, let them come. Good, we need a new incarnate. Totally like the blood incarnates. The blood infusion gives them the nice mosquito swarm. Physical damage. Really, really good. So this will continue motivating him to come a bit closer. See, this would be the position that uh, you're trying to contest. If you wouldn't uh, pull back to the pos uh, position that I'm currently showing you. And the fully buffed up incarnate is being one shot. That is a bit concerning. Okay, can we reach him from here? I think he's on the edge. Just barely interrupted the path. That here would be an option. Okay, good. So, arrowheads, yes. Peace of mind, yes. Sky shot, yes. Let's get this guy, good. Again, we're buffing up even. He can't be buffed up enough. Because this here is going to hurt. You can already tell they are hitting hard.
Good, the enemy archers need to move a bit closer and having them in a low ground position is exactly what we would want to have. Good, let's buff up ourselves, yep, that worked like a charm. Good, Saiken is in combat as well. I think so far we only have one target. Might as well focus on the Magister Swordsman here. I am going to save the other two points. We are not in dire need to use them yet. I'd like to get rid of all of his physical armor, which we just did. Oh, that was helpful. Good. So... Should have the absolute superior position here. They will need one more turn of movement. And we only pulled four, so that's best case scenario. This was working as good as it could. Very nice. So finally we got the captain uh, down here as well. Let me think what a good option would be. Hmm. You know what? Why not? So... Let's position both of them here. We're going to change the ground. Making all of this hostile and their life an absolute misery. Nice, and that should poison both of them. Great.
Perfect. He's even surrounded. <laughs> He's even surrounded by uh, oil, which makes it so much harder for him. Let's make some poison arrows. I really don't want to get rid of the oil, to be honest. And the Mag Magister Swordsman is anyways crippled, so he can't move. Might as well use a slowdown arrow and slow the captain. Well, that solved the cripple. 75 damage, wow. That's a lot. Good, that took care of him. Time to get out of here. And move over here. He does not have his blitz attack up. Cooldown is still going. I think we're going to wait with uh, summoning an incarnate until uh, the point when we change everything to fire that's just more effective and in the meantime everyone gets back some magical armor and we're just going to wait so now the archers have no other option than coming down they can aim for the totems, but that really doesn't bother me at all. Perfect. Let's focus on the Magister Captain here. There we go. And he's beautifully entangled. Now switch the element to fire. So don't need to do anything really good time for the magister captain to die Really solid summoning. Let's buff it up so that the fireball that the incarnate is going to summon will deal enough damage. And let's put our totems a bit further to the back so that the archers can't reach them.
There we go. Burning and knockdown. Oh, knockdown was blocked. Unbelievable. It was fully buffed, yet a single one shot. Burning, even more burning, even more burning. And some bleeding. He's going to die. He's poisoned, he bleeds, and he's burning at the same time. Never a good combination. I think we're fine. Starting to soften up the Ranger. Oh nice, the critical hit landed really, really well. The Magister is going to die, but we might as well take a shot, uh, use the Executioner and take a shot over here. All right. They still try to stay on high ground, clever, but it's not going to help them. Saiken buffs himself. I've never had the situation that they would simply stand over there. Well, it's not a problem. We do have sky shot and we do have totems. Plus we do have uh, summonings. Okay, this here should deal damage. Yep, it is perfect. Good. Unfortunately, we can't hit it. Uh, at, uh, hit uh, the enemy at the moment. Hmm. How about AOE arrows? Yes, so that works. Good.
There we go. Nice little setup. Both of them even cluster up. That is more than I would have asked for. Good, let's soften them up. Remove physical armor from both, uh, both of them. And then we can start engaging on them. go. I think the combat is up and one. They really can't do much here. On top of their miserable situation they now are also entangled. Okay, we got one, almost one down, and the other one will die soon afterwards as well. There we go, double kill. And this is pretty much how you deal with them. We got ourselves a decent pair of boots and that's a really really nice two-hander. Almost makes me want to reskill into two-handed weapon fighting. But I want to st uh, stick with our uh, build for now. So one of the things that I can recommend once you have uh, cleared out uh, the area here is to essentially go and uh, loot all of uh, the cupboards. There are a lot of crafting materials here in the camp. And even behind, even behind these uh, gates, you will find hidden chests.
Good. I think I can do the rest here uh, for now offline. Uh, this is a pretty long episode anyways. So we came to the end of uh, this episode and we're going to clear the last big portion of the outer region. Next, it's going to be a very hard fight, uh, but I can show you how it's done. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I enjoyed the game so far. I hope you did as well. And see you on the next run. Bye-bye.